Autogen just got better again. I always try to update you guys about any improvements in the Autogen framework and the Microsoft team keeps on moving fast, very fast and keeps on updating and making it way better. If you guys have been following me for a while, you know that one of the things that I would love to see in Autogen and other agentic frameworks such as uh, Query AI, for example, is more control over the output of the agents and more control over the flow. Because as I said in the past, these agents have a ton of potential, but if we can control them and their output can be nonsense, some nonsense or hallucinations, uh, it, we can't really leverage it in production level. So this new thing that Autogen have added this new capability is really something significant and let's cover it today. So basically just the bottom line is you can see here the results, these two um, rows are related to the new feature or the new capability. And you can see like at the end of the day, this is like the most important metric is there is a huge improvement over the other methods of using an autogen but we will cover everything right now so basically this is a blog post by the autogen team and they introduce state flow which allows you to build llm workflows with a customized state oriented transition in the group chat so basically what you can do in opposing to in the past and you just created a flow now you can create different states in the flow so let's say the beginning the end and what what's in between and for each state of the flow you can have different instructions or different agents doing the work and basically to be honest the blog explains this better than i do so the tldr is introduce state flow a task solving paradigm that conceptualizes complex task solving processes backed by llms as state machines Okay, these were many buzzwords, but let's uh, cover the introduction. So LLMs have increasingly been employed to solve complex multi-step tasks. For example, tasks that require a sequence of complex reasoning and interacting with external environments and tools. To facilitate the development of such applications, we introduced state flow, a new paradigm that conceptualizes complex ta task solving processes backed by LLM as a state machines. Now, basically, what they are saying is that finite state machines are used to control systems to monitor practical applications such as traffic, traffic light control. A defined state is a model of behavior that decides what to do based on the current state. A state represents one situation that the state mach machine might be in. It will all clear up soon once I cover the example, don't worry. And all states cover all possible situations of the finite state machine. Drawing from this concept, we want to use state machines to model the task solving process of LLM. When using an LLM to solve a task, each step of the task solving process can be mapped to a state. For example, the process starts at the init state when the task is given. When reaching a state, a sequence of output functions is called to add content to the context history, including sending specific instructions, using a tool or calling LLM, LLM itself. And based on the current state and context history, the state flow model determines the next state to transit to. Essentially, we are sending different instructions to the LLM to ask it to perform different actions based on the current state. In state, in state flow, we construct a state machine to control a single LLM, sending different instructions to its different states. We also provide an agent view of the framework, which is called SF agent, state flow agent, that can use different LLM agents to perform actions at different states. In this case, we don't need to add instructions to the context history and call the LLM. Now, this is an experiment. Basically, you can see here, we evaluate state flow on different tasks. And you can see here that they have different states. So P stands for prompt. M for LM response and E for execution. And these are different states. So initialization. So there is the prompt and then there is the execution. Then there is the next state of observing. So the prompt, 
the LLM response, the execution, if there is an error, they do this again, the prompt, the LLM response and the execution. And then if it is fine, if it, the error was solved, only if it was solved, they are moving to the next uh, state, which is the select. And then they can go back and forth between the select and the verification stage. And only when it is working, they are moving on to the end of the workflow. So just to give you another practical example. So let's say I want to write a blog post. So I initialize the blog post. I can do the research. Then I check if the research was done correctly based on different parameters. It is moving on to writing the, the outline. If the research didn't produce anything, let's say it produced an error, we can send the prompt to here and basically ask a new research agent or, or modify or add context to the prompt so the research will be better. Only if the research was then solved or produced what we wanted, the result that we wanted it to yield, then we move on to writing the outline. And only if the outline is good, we send it to, the, let's say, the blog writer. Then the blog writer can write the blog. If it has enough, enough of data, it is move, it moves on to the proofreader, for example, and then the proofreader can approve the blog. If it doesn't have enough data or the proofreader, let's say he says the blog is lacking stuff, so we can send it back to the research state. The research state is going to add more data and only if there is enough data, move back to the blog writer and it, when once the blog writer finishes writing the blog, send it to the proofreader. And if the proofreader approves it, it basically can um, stop the sequence. So basically, this allows us to have way more control of the agentic frameworks and add a layer of criticism in each step. And only when we are happy based on the validation and based on the results, we can move on to the next step. Let me show you another example from a different blog post by the Autogen team. So you can see here, and um, this, this is related to their uh, graph. But as you can see here, there is the user, we have the planner, the planner always sends data to the engineer. The engineer can send data to the executor. We have the critique. So different agents have different uh, agents that they can speak with in different instances or parts of the process. Now let's go back here. So let's see what I want to share with you. These are the results. Basically they compared what they were able to achieve using the state flow versus using the React and the planner solve. React is just a few short prompting method that prompts the model to generate thoughts and actions. And the plan and solve is a two-step prompting strategy. First, ask the mod first asking the model to propose and plan, and then executing it. You can see here the, the difference in, first of all, the cost of tokens and the amount of errors and the amount of turns that it took in order to generate the results. Over here, they are sharing another example. So you can see here, they ha we have the initialization the retrieval. So basically this is a research agent. Maybe we cover this example. Okay, let's cover it. So we illustrate how to build state flow with group chat. Previous blog, which we just uh, covered, introduces a new feature of group chat that allows us to input a transition graph to constraint agent transition. It requires us to use natural language to describe the transi transition conditions between the agents. And this can be seen here. So you can see over here that, for example, the planner agent, we give him a description, which basically tells him, I am only allowed to speak immediately if the last number mentioned by critique is a multiple, multiple of five. And the next speaker should be planner. As you guys probably recall, we have the description and the system message. They are different and the description message is basically a short line describing 
the assistant or, or the agent. While in opposing to the description, the system message is basically what you're telling the agent to do. You're describing the agent to itself. So the description is external. It is for the other agents to know what each agent can do. And the system message is more, it's precisely correct, but it's more like the instructions that you provide to the agent that he will know what he is exactly. So going back to the other example, as we said, we can use the, the we can use the, the graph and the descriptions in order to define to each agent what he can do. So you can see over here, let's go back to the blog post. So in this blog, we take advantages of customized speaker selection function passed to the speaker selection method of the group chat object. This function allows us to custom transition logic between agents and can be used together with the transition graph introduced in the FSM group chat. The current state flow implementation also allows the user to override the transition graph and these transi transitions can be used on the current speaker by static checking of the context history. For example, checking if error is in the last message. And here's the example. So we have your decoder, write Python code to retrieve papers from archive. And we have the executor, execute the code written by the coder and report the results. And the scientist, you're a scientist, please categorize papers after seeing their abstracts printed and create a markdown table with the domain, title, author, summary, and link. Return terminate in the end. And over here, we create a simple workflow for research with four states, the init, the retrieval, retrieve, research, and the end. So init is, we use the initializer to start the workflow. Retrieve, we will first call the coder to write the code and then call the executor to execute the code. The research stage, in which we will call the scientist to read the papers and write the summary and the end. And you can see over here, the customized function to control the transition between states. So this is the state transition. If the last speaker is the initializer, return speaker. If the last speaker is the coder, return executor. Else if the last speaker is executor, if the message content is exit code, return coder. Else, so this is in case that the execution failed. And Else, if the execution didn't fail, it was successful, we are moving to the scientist, as you can see here. So basically, we have different conditions in the flow, and only if the flow execution, if the research was conducted correctly, we move to the next state, which is very cool because, again, I started the video by saying that one thing that I was feeling like a disadvantage of using this adjacent framework is the fact that we couldn't add this layer of control of the flow. And it was a very sequential flow in the past was that we had no control. So sometimes the output wasn't in the high standard that I expected or wanted it to be in order to actually trust the output. So now when we have this ability to validate and go back easily to the next to the to the previous step when the validation layer tells us that something is incorrect this has way more control and can basically yield better results and this is basically the end of this blog post and i guess this, i guess this is also the end of the video obviously this is just the beginning um, for me of using this uh, ability. I haven't, haven't even implemented this in my flows yet, but this seems very promising. So I'm, I wanted to share it with you guys. And I believe this is a huge progress for the agentic frameworks, especially for Autogen, because I haven't seen it in other frameworks, to be honest. But this will allow us a lot more control and will probably create better output. 
that's it if you guys enjoyed the video please make sure to subscribe and like the video if you have any comments criticism suggestions for improvement leave them in the comment section below and until next time keep on automating